Hey guys, CB Super here. Uh, today I want to go over masking. Um, I'm actually going to show two different ways to mask. I'm going to show you how to do masks both in the color tab and in the fusion tab. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. First, we're going to jump into the color tab. I'm just going to grab two pieces of footage here, bring them both in, make them right around the same length, and jump right into the color tab. Uh, first thing you'll notice is I have clips set up over here. If you don't see clips right away, uh, clips is right up here. You can click it on and off. And nodes, if you don't have these nodes over here, just click on the nodes up here. Uh, you might also have um, scopes set up just to the right over here. You're going to want keyframes. And you should still see all these tools. And we don't have any stills created. We can actually probably just get rid of the gallery for now. You'll notice that we have, uh, this is our top footage, this is our bottom footage. You can't see the bottom footage, obviously, because the top footage is on top of it. And we only have one node set up uh, as of right now. Uh, if you don't have a node for whatever reason, say if I was to accidentally delete this or if I wanted to start over, all you have to do is hit Alt-S and that'll create another node. And then you can just start working on that node from there. Most of our masking is going to be done here in the power windows or the or the windows function. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab one of these circles just to kind of like show you how this works. Um, now you'll notice when I put that circle on here and you know I can feather it out a little bit. Uh, if you can see this icon over here or the node, you'll notice that there's now gray on the outside of it, uh, which means that the mask has been created. We can't see it right now. We just have to right click and add a alpha output and then just grab this little blue square and connect it to that output over on the right and now you'll see that we've uh, made a mask <clears throat> and that's kind of weird kind of like ominous looking so if i want to invert that i don't like the way that looks i want to invert it i can there's this little icon down here i just click on that and that'll invert the mask say if i want to animate this mask for whatever reason um, one thing i want to do is i want to set all of these parameters over here in the transform before i start animating because if I if I if I click on the keyframe and then I start you know resizing it and panning it that's gonna all be animated and if that's what you're going for then that's great but if you're not then make sure that you set up like your softness um, if you want to rotate it for whatever reason or you want to change your opacity do that all before you start animating it because once I click on this uh, little keyframe right here and then I go forward in time and say I want to move this over here um, all of that is going to move as well. Okay, so say if you delete a node um, and you just want to create a new node, just hit Alt-S and that'll create you a new node. Or if you mess up on your mask and you just want to start all over, you can just delete that node and just put in a new mask and you should be fine. So I'm actually going to use the pen tool now and I'm just going to animate a little bit around her face. Um, and Masks aren't just for creating, uh, you know, like windows in through one footage to another footage. You can also do things like, um, say I want to use this to just brighten up her face a little bit. I can do that. Um, and then if I want this, if I want that power window to follow her, so maybe she moves a little bit, I can come back to the window I can go to the beginning of my footage and I can click on this uh, keyframe over here by the corrector node. And I'm going to want to move it just slightly just so it creates that initial keyframe. And then I can move it a little bit. I can keep moving it as her face moves. Move it. And it's like I'm tracking her basically. I'm just tracking it by hand because uh, I just want to keep her face bright for the entire time. Maybe I feel like it needs to also. Um, get sized up a little bit and I don't want her neck to be taken I can do that and I can just continue uh, refining this and moving it if I want to and then if I go back you'll notice that everything is going to change and everything is going to animate along with um, along with my mask just the way that I wanted it to and you'll notice even the mask changes uh, shape and whatnot so there's a couple different ways you can use masks inside the color node, but let me show you how to do it in Fusion. And in order to do it in Fusion, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just delete these and bring in a couple different pieces of footage real quick. And I'm just sizing these just because 
I don't want to be all OCD. All right, so in order to work on both of these clips at the same time, um, I'm going to want to actually create a new Fusion clip, and then I'll just bring this into Fusion. And we're basically going to create the same thing that we did. Um, so if you want to see two frames at the same time, uh, you can just click on this little icon over here, and that'll split these frames up. And then now we can see both our footages. Uh, and I actually, I like to do that just for when I want to name them. I'm not going to name them right now, but if I want to name them, uh, I'll do that kind of quickly. But I actually like working in one frame, and I'll usually use the merge node so I know exactly what I'm doing. All right, so this is actually our background footage, and this is our foreground. So the foreground is going to be on top. Um, so our foreground, we know, will be our rainy day. Uh, I'm just going to add in an ellipse, and you'll notice right away I already get that merge node. I don't have to, like, redo anything with an output. Uh, you'll notice, though, it's blue, just like we had to, you know, just how we had to connect the blue connections over in, uh, in the color tab. This one, as long as when I create the ellipse, as long as uh, when I click that little ellipse key, if I'm highlighted on my footage, it'll go ahead and already input and create that mask for you, and you won't really have to do too much. And then if I want to invert this, all I have to do is click on the invert button, and that'll invert it for me. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is, and I'm going to show you how to do pretty much the exact same things that we did over there. If I want to animate this over time, all I have to do is come over to center. Uh, I can create a keyframe. Uh, I move it over maybe 20 frames, and I'll move it over. It automatically create another keyframe, and now you can see that uh, it it just animates over time. Uh, say I want to do the same thing though. Say, say I want to just use my masks uh, as like a power window to you know lighten something up. I can do that as well. Uh, so one thing to note is that um, you actually have to move your playhead over to the to the footage, and then I can go ahead and jump into Fusion. Um, so here's my footage. Uh, let's say I want to add a shift space and just type in CC for a color corrector, and I'm going to put a mask while I'm highlighted on the color corrector. I'm just going to put an ellipse mask, and I'm just going to reshape this ellipse mask a little bit. Something like that. Put it over her face. And I want to soften this edge just a bit. Now if I come over to the color corrector and I brighten up the gamma just a little bit. And then I'm actually going to brighten up or raise the saturation just a little bit just to kind of keep. Well, usually when you brighten up something, you also have to add just a little bit of saturation. Not always, but a lot of the time. Okay, so now... Um, when I animate this over time, I'm actually going to want to uh, make sure that I'm back over on this ellipse. And I'm going to just go ahead and set my center. Uh, maybe move a few frames. Move it. Keep moving it uh, every few frames. Just keep moving it. And now you can see if we play it back, uh, it, basically we've just done the same thing. So um, you also have a bunch more options in Fusion and in the color tab as well that we didn't go over today. There's just so many things that you can do with masks that uh, I can't really cover it all in this video. Um, I will start covering, I'm going to probably cover a different, couple different masking techniques uh, over the next, and you know, this is including everything from like rotoscoping to, um, to you know, different uh, panning masking effects. Masks are like one of the, the key fundamentals for most visual effects and graphics and, uh, and and they're used for so many different things. So as you can see, we can use it not only just to burn holes in footage, um, but also to just make sure that we're having, we're selecting a certain area in order to work with. Um, and one thing to note is if you ever want to kind of take a look at your mask and what's going on, um, all you have to do is click on the viewer, press the A key, um, but if we click on the ellipse and we just uh, we just view that, now we'll see exactly like what our mask is doing. You can see that it's bright white. Uh, everything in black is just transparent, uh, and the mask is only affecting what's what's white. And then you'll notice that there's a nice bit of fall off that we created with this soft edge. So, and then just to go back to uh, your regular RGB mode, just hit the A again. Uh, something to note is that if you come over to the media pool, you can actually just drop media in here from the media tab. You don't have to create 
that um, uh, that fusion clip if you don't want. Uh, it's just you know sometimes it's a little bit easier because you already have things on your timeline. So all right, so that's about it uh, for me. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.